but personally as a journalist trying to be objective about the case. Um, I we are change as America, um, New York. The fact that he called to audit the Federal Reserve, the fact that he is calling out how the elections are rigged and supported by big money. He called out uh, George W. Bush and he said Bush knew about 9-11. He wants to release the 28 pages. All huge, nuanced points that are extremely powerful, extremely truthful, that have actually woken up a lot of people. But yet, on the other hand, he also says that the police in the United States need to be militarized. He says family members of even suspected terrorist members should be murdered and tortured. Um, so, on the other hand, he's also talking about um, increasing libel laws to make sure journalists um, can criticize politicians openly like they do um, here, uh, like they do in the United States. Um, so, he's also meeting with Henry Kissinger. Uh, he also says Richard Haas is the, his advisor. Richard Haas denies that. Um, he, it did also come out that he does have uh, many phone calls with Henry Kissinger, um, had a private meeting with him, and of course all those details are not disclosed. So it's a very interesting paradox. Um, it's definitely fascinating and it's definitely um, welcomed, sorry, allergies. It definitely welcomed uh, a lot of new dialogue within the United States. So it's just incredible to see something unfold like this. Um, and um, Trump, we still don't know. We still have a lot of time in the election to see um, where he goes, what he does, who his advisors would be, who his VP candidates would be. Um, he also goes off and talks about Vince Foster, which was huge. Um, if you don't know anything about Vince Foster, you need to Google it. He also goes off, and then, um, well, what else did he do? He openly just breaks all these nuanced points as well. Uh, but at the same time, he also calls for a lot of draconian policies. Um, so, man, I s still cannot make up my mind about Donald Trump, to be honest with you. And I just try to call it, it, call it objectively as I can. Uh, compared to Hillary, uh, could you leave some words uh, for Hillary, maybe? Hillary is the biggest criminal crook in Washington, D.C., in probably uh, the political history of the United States. She is in bed with Saudi Arabia, who gave her $100 million. She is in bed with all the major corporations. She has Google executives, Facebook executives, Twitter executives working with her on her campaign. So obviously, they could rig this election. It, there was a new scientific study um, that was conducted showing how Google could actually swing the election just by changing the, their news algorithm and their search algorithm. Um, and obviously, you're seeing a huge bias by the establishment, by the mainstream media by major corporations and social media uh, companies pushing for um, Hillary Rodham Clinton. She is the establishment of the establishment. She has ties and roots to a lot of corrupt, evil behavior that Washington has conducted within the last few years. And she has her fingerprints and also blood on her hands, especially when it comes to Libya, especially when it comes to Syria. What she has done is really um, not only destabilize the world, but just ultimately proved how corrupt you could be and how you could buy off these elections. You know, there's rallies and there's photos of uh, Hillary Clinton having 60 people there. Meanwhile, Bernie Sanders has 10,000, but yet Hillary Clinton is still winning the nomination with the superdelegates. And again, these are all things Trump also calls out. Um, so Hillary, biggest criminal in Washington, D.C., biggest roots in corruption. Uh, the worst choice possibly ever, and I think because of this divide and conquer, choose of the lesser of two evils, Hillary Clinton is so bad, everyone's running towards uh, the former apprentice celebrity who uh, is very open and can talk. I, I actually, uh, as a journalist in the United States, I've been banned from any Hillary Clinton campaign event. Uh, even Bernie Sanders' campaign blocked me. I'm still able to, uh, able to go to Trump events. He still has press conferences. Hillary Clinton has not had a press conference this entire year. For over uh, 200 days now, she has stayed silent and not taken questions from the media because she is just full of corruption and she is afraid of the light. Trump, he openly makes a press conference and then he talks about how horrible the mainstream media is and tells it right to their face, which is interesting to see. Is there any chance, sorry, is there any chance that Bernie Sanders becomes the running mate of Hillary Clinton? No, I highly uh, doubt that. Um, 
Um, I don't see that political landscape unfolding, especially with the way the elections, even though Bernie Sanders is ultimately a very strong proponent for Hillary as well. He hasn't attacked her on the emails. He said, we need to stop talking about the emails, the Hillary Clinton scandalous emails. And he's going soft on her. He's not attacking her on Vince Foster. He's not attacking her on Saudi Arabia. He's not attacking her on a lot of the key critical issues that really highlight how corrupt she really is. Uh, and he also said, when I lose, I'm going to uh, support and, and make sure we support the nominee, Hillary Clinton. He said that openly uh, to his whole fan base. And Hillary Clinton is going to be re-energized with a bunch of young supporters uh, who were Bernie supporters, and they will listen to Bernie and, and do what Bernie tells them to do, and that will be to vote for Hillary Clinton. All right, um, so we are at the limit right now. Uh, could you tell us what was special this year for you since you covered it, like, I don't know, uh, how, how many years have you covered it? Over 10 years now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us uh, what was uh, special this year and how have you been treated? Yeah. Uh, it, it, it definitely been special with uh, just clear, outright abuse, intimidation, harassment, uh, threats of violence, just for simply being here, just for simply doing my job as a journalist. I, as a journalist, am here to uh, be beholden to the public. We are looking for the greater good of the people. We are looking to document, to share information, to empower individuals for the public interest. And we are doing nothing wrong, nothing illegal, nothing dangerous, nothing troublemaking as they've labeled us and uh, we have been told if we come here we will be physically assaulted, we will be arrested. Uh, the police officer told me this after illegally stealing my camera. They raided our hotel room, searched our hotel room illegally uh, and he looked me dead in the eyes and said, yeah, I'm here to intimidate and harass you on behalf of the Bilderberg Group, uh, which shows you the clear state of how powerful these guys are, how influential these guys are, and just also how above the law and how immoral these guys are to go after concerned citizens and journalists out here. So it's been more of a heavy-handed um, approach this year than uh, other years before, even though other years they had me arrested and set up for fake drug charges that I never had and put me in jail. They had to release me because they had nothing on me. But they did this before just for simply talking, just for simply asking questions, just for simply uh, putting a video camera out there. Um, and this year is worse than the year that I got arrested, uh, which says a lot. I haven't been arrested yet, but I've been detained dozens of times. I de checked dozens of times, and, and yet, yet again, um, just everything was done by them, so I couldn't do my job. So I had to constantly be searched, constantly give my ID, constantly be put um, detained by the police. So I can't be out here documenting, filming, and the police and the police state. Uh, and their draconian, tyrannical measures that they have established here, they have become the story. All right, uh, one last question. Uh, besides all the trouble that uh, like every year, what do you like it's coming to these events? I like all the other individuals here who are fearless, who the police tell, if you come back here, we're going to arrest you. They come back here anyway and say, you know what? Our rights, our human dignity, our... Um, Resistance against these guys is more important than anything else. And being with these people and, and uh, working with them is an absolute honor, it's an absolute pleasure. And it's also really fun to chase these guys down in the middle of the street when they do go out for their walk and ask them some serious questions. And you can literally see them run. That's fun. All right, thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Send that to Ned. Hello, dear. <laughs> Da ist der Störer aus Berlin. Das macht er aber gut. Und gerade haben wir deshalb die letzten Sätze wahrscheinlich nicht mitgekriegt. Das war von Via Change. What was your name? And um, oh I, God. it's you okay. Now. It's also for Schall und Rauch. And I will translate it or study. And it's really amazing. The world needs to know this. Yeah. They do, yeah. And um, we, I didn't understand the last sentence of this question. Could you um, repeat it, perhaps? What's the best part about Bilderberg? Um, yeah, the last question was about how you was have been treated here and um, what's your mission and um, 
And my question is, how um, is your influence in, in the States and international? How many people watch this? Has it any um, impact um, on the politics or journalists who see it? I, now f I know now what it feels like to be a Bilderberger being confronted by all these cameras. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Obviously, this year has been very critically important to document everything that's happening. There's a lot of important geopolitical landscapes and moves being made and decided here behind closed doors, especially when it comes to Beatrix, especially when it comes to mass migration. And we're really at a turning point of yes. where things will shift. And we're seeing a huge influx of just people distrusting the status quo, distrusting the system because they don't work in open, transparent ways like you're seeing happen right behind us. There's no discussion. There's no... Uh, democratic there's no open process to decide the way we live our lives it's all decided for us by a lot of these individuals behind closed doors but no transparency with no openness paid for by tax paying dollars paid for uh, by you for these guys to collude together for their own personal well-being and their own personal benefit and obviously there are self-interested uh, any major corporation any major company any major bank any major yes. industrial complex is self-interested in their own personal well-being and survival. Um, yes. So obviously those individuals and entities, when they all come together, they can do a lot of damage. Yes. What do you think about, uh, you, you mentioned the mass migration, do you also think that's a kind of weapon against Germany and Europe? I think it's um, a weapon on uh, both sides where uh, no side is really winning. Uh, only the people are losing yes. and the power brokers are winning. Um, yeah. What are they winning out of it? What is their uh, aim? Divide and conquer, um, establishing a police state, establishing draconian laws, establishing more taxes, uh, establishing just people fighting each other and hating each other based off their own religion, based off their own race, which is not fun to see. Um, it's happening in the United States, it's happening inside of Europe, and they use this as a tool, this as a way to um, ultimately rule from the top while the people fight each other, uh, which is yes. ridiculous. Uh, if you know the IMF and the World Bank weren't destabilizing third world countries, if the military industrial complex was not bombing all these countries and overthrowing governments, we would not have this, uh, this kind of destabilized condition all over the world that we have now. Um, so I don't blame migrants for looking for uh, safety in other countries because of the damage that these elites caused. And I don't blame Europeans who are mad about their taxes going up, their jobs going away, and yes. also living in a horrible uh, condition um, because of this. So I don't blame either side of this argument because I understand both of them. And yes. both of them, the people actually lose. Uh, yes. A lot of other media organizations, especially some here, they just point the blame and say, it's all the Muslims, it's all the, it's not. We're just human beings, we all want the same thing in this world. And we're being, we're being pushed against each other, we're being divided, we're being um, just ultimately conquered by these guys because of the decisions that they're making on the inside and screwing everyone over, um, including the migrants, including the European people, including the American people, including the Mexican people. We're all losing because of these guys and unless we all stop fighting and bickering, against each other and start realizing, yep, yeah, it's those guys. Yes. Then we could come to a solution, then we could come to a better way of life. Yes. Um, I came a little late, the interview started, I, uh, you, you were talking about Donald Trump and his role, and do you think that he's got any chance uh, against Hillary now? I don't think so, but... No, the establishment is tied in with Hillary, the establishment is pushing for Hillary, the establishment is the one who wants her in power because she is the one who can be easily bought and controlled and do the bidding of the corporate globalist cabal that really run things behind the scenes. Trump seems resistant, but we don't know for sure yet. He still hasn't picked his advisors. He still hasn't picked his VP. Once he does that, we will know what kind of person he is and what kind of government he's going to run. Right now, we don't know anything. He says yes. one thing. He says another thing another day. But yes. um, he, you know, if you're looking for the lesser of two evils, uh, Obviously, with Hillary being so evil and corrupt, it's Trump.
But also, I don't believe in voting for the lesser of two evils. Yes. We'll see how he develops and we see what he does. How do you see the danger of World War Three in Europe and Germans? I cover that in great geopolitical context. It's very complicated. It's very detailed. All on uh, uh, all on YouTube.com forward slash We Are Change. I have to go film and see what's going yes. on. Yes, thank you very much. Herr Steinmeier. Der Tod auf Rädern, Herr Schäuble, das sind Verbrecher. Vorbereitung eines Angriffskrieges, machen die! Thank you, Mike. Ja, 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 hatte keine, hatte keine die wichtigsten Leute sind wohl abgefahren. Da läuft nicht mehr viel. Das war einer der profundesten Kenner der amerikanischen Politik und der, einer der führenden der Via Change Bewegung und ähm, danke.